I just want to say I'm glad you're here. Considering that I don't really have an introduction, let's just do the video. So the question that we're asking today is if the wage gap exists. It does not. So this week, an Australian left-wing politician tweeted this. A person with a Certificate 3 and early childhood education, where about 98% of the workers are women, earns around $20 an hour, when someone with a Certificate 3 in metalwork earns around $40 an hour. That is gender-based discrimination. That's an interesting concept there, friend. I wonder if that is at all backed up by, I don't know, like science or peer-reviewed literature. Probably not. I would just like to give you my, my gender card. There you go. And if you could please just give me 500 oppression points, that would be great. Anyway, that tweet got me googling the wage gap, which is always a fun adventure, especially if you like being really disappointed by really, really bad maths. For those of you who don't know, the wage gap is basically the idea that women are paid less in the workforce by virtue of, well, being a woman. Because, <laughs> you know, sexism. So without further ado, I found this particularly ridiculous video and I felt like we could react to it together. Although it's mostly me reacting with sadness. The gender pay gap, pay gap, pay gap is not real. <laughs> I threw up in my mouth a little. Skeptics of the gender pay gap exist, even though there's extensive research proving it's real. I always find it funny when people are like, there's so much research into this one particular topic because a lot of the times when it comes to the wage gap, information is cherry picked based on a certain amount of variables that are used in that particular study. Lots of institutions, well-known institutions and statistical institutions have said that it's basically impossible to determine what causes the wage gap simply because there are far too many variables to test or to at least look out for in a study. The point is that there's way, way too many variables in this situation, in this context, to actually determine what might cause discrepancy or disparity in pay. Only 61% of men believe that men make more than women for performing the same jobs. The way this girl is saying women, I don't know if it's just me, but it doesn't, I don't feel like it's right. I feel like she's saying it wrong. But the reality is, US women- Surely everyone else is hearing this. She just said it like that again. Is this, I don't even know. How can we even talk about the wage gap when you can't even say women correctly? But the reality is, US women working full time earn just 80 cents for every dollar men earned in 2016. And the gap is even worse when broken down by race. So I guess something to note is that when studies are conducted, it's really important to look at who is conducting the study and where their funding comes from. The fact that this is obviously a women's institute that is conducting this particular study doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. This sounds like the definition of bias. This might be the opportune time to really throw into the mix that the way the wage gap is calculated is basically by taking the entire earnings of both men and women and then doing some division. Yeah. Across men, women, and obviously ethnic groups, it doesn't take into consideration, like for like role comparisons, meaning you compare managers to managers or grape pickers to grape pickers doing the same amount of work. It also doesn't take into consideration hours worked. It also doesn't take into consideration job titles or job performance or anything else. Are six common myths you hear about the pay gap and how to convince the deniers that it's real. Women leave the workforce to have children. It's not that women want to leave their jobs to take care of children, it's that they're forced to. What? Okay, so saying that women don't want to leave the workforce to have offspring is probably one of the stupidest things I have ever heard. Mothers are the primary caregivers in most situations because that's how couples choose to structure their lives. That's how society chooses to structure most family units. And unfortunately, women are the ones who give birth, breastfeed, and do all that other fun parental stuff because, you know, since forever and since the dawn of time, mothers have been the primary caregivers. A lot of men and women in the U.S. don't have paid family leave. Research shows that women will take unpaid family leave, but men refuse to. What? I honestly, okay. All right. <laughs> women will take unpaid family leave, but men refuse to. 
I honestly had to listen to that like 14 times because I don't really know what point they're trying to make. I don't, what it, can you be clearer please? I know that it's really hard for you guys to make your shitty opinions clear, but if you could just be clearer about what you're trying to say, it would make it easier for me to make fun of you. <laughs> Who made this? Can we just talk about the fact that men refusing to take paid parental leave is, how is that relevant? What has that even got to do with the wage gap? What? What? It's not up to your employer to fund your life choices. I know that's unrelated to the wage gap, but I just felt like I needed to say that. When women in the workforce have children, research shows they experience a pay cut. It's not that women are more likely to experience a pay cut when they go off and have children. It's usually that they're not working as many hours, so they're not making as much money. It's not exactly like the employer says, you know what? You've just had an offsprings. I'ma cut your wages. You are getting 25% less because you pushed out a kid. Usually what happens is when a woman has a child and then returns to work, she's actually working less hours or less days in the week. Meaning that she'll usually go back to work part-time or casually to keep up with having to actually take care of her children at home. This information is probably already in these actual studies, studies, and these people who made this video are probably just overlooking it and not giving you the background on why these things happen. Context is so important. But when men have kids, they get a pay increase. Experts call it the fatherhood bonus. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's not the fatherhood bonus. It's if I don't feed my family, we'll die. So in the same way that women's choices change when they go back to work, it's exactly the same for men. In fact, statistically, men are more likely to have a strengthened attachment to the workplace after they have a child. The reason for that is naturally because they're supporting another person as well as their partner who is staying at home. So naturally, because their partner is not working and contributing to the household, that father often works longer hours and more shifts or, you know, depending on what industry he's in, he'll work more for more time. He might get a pay increase because his employer is probably like, you know what, Johnny, you're putting in like four million hours a week and I'm just, I think that I need to reward you. Here, have some Coke. The drink, not the drug. And even when women decide to stay in the workforce and never have kids, we're still seeing a pay gap. Yeah, what other variables are there though? What percentage of women? How long have they been in the workforce? What roles are they in? Context matters. Men simply work harder and work longer hours. I don't think so. <laughs> mm, I don't think so. No one really cares what you think. On average, women spend more time than men doing housework and caring for kids and older family members. Mm. All right, are we talking about the workplace? Or are we talking about the home workplace? Mind you, one is paid monetarily and the other one is not. There's a, that's a massive thing to note about this. Yes, it is true, women on average work more and do more in the home from chores to whatever else people do in the home. Cooking, I'm not sure. This more often gets attributed to the fact that men and women in relationships structure their household that way. And while women are at home doing domestic work, men are able to log more continuous work hours, resulting in a pay premium. So what you're saying is that men do work harder and longer hours in the workplace. Because when people say men work longer hours, they're not referring to at home, they're referring to the workplace. So yes, in a work setting, men log more hours, more continuous hours, because they're working more continuously. So women have an unpaid second shift that subsidizes men's work. Uh, no, you, no, no. The choices that you make individually with your partner, you can't argue that that somehow is you subsidizing his work. If you want him to participate more at home, ask him to participate more at home. In fact, studies show that men like participating in the home life and Couples that actually share work do better in the long term and actually raise better kids. If you want better kids in a better home life, ask your husband to help. Men are more educated than women. False. Well, I can tell you that as someone with a math degree, I'm poor. 
Women earn about 56% of all bachelor's degrees in the United States. Research has found that as an increasing number of women are seeking higher education, the pay gap is shrinking. But if you compare men and women with the same level of education, the pay gap is even larger. Men are rewarded disproportionately for earning the same credentials as women. Here's a concept. Just because you might have a degree in something or you might be educated in a particular field comparative to the opposite sex, that doesn't mean that you're going to get far in the workplace. Just because you have a master's degree doesn't mean you're going to end up with the job that you wanted. That's not, that's not how it works. The idea, in theory, is that you get a degree and then you get the job that you want, but that's not how it works in practice, you know, most of the time. This has nothing to do with rewarding people, it has to do with the choices that you make through your life. Women are more transient in the workplace. Women are less likely to stay in the same job for the same amount of time than a man might. Women make different choices pertaining to the roles that they go into and how long they work. Let me also add, women overwhelmingly are getting more degrees than men these days. But women are not getting degrees in areas that have the highest incomes or that work the most hours. You know, things like the STEM fields or engineering and things like that. Women are getting degrees in psychology and counseling. They're getting degrees in child work. They're getting degrees in gender studies. In the end, if we're talking about like-for-like like degrees and ending up in different places, like two lawyers who end up in different firms getting paid different wages, that comes down to life choices. If we're looking at it basically just based off of who has bachelor's degrees, who has master's degrees, how many there are, then yeah, women are getting dumber degrees than men, on the whole. Women don't know how to negotiate. It's true that women are less likely to negotiate job offers, but that's because when women ask for higher salaries, they are viewed as high maintenance, demanding, and often penalized. Negotiating skills can't combat gender bias and discrimination. <sighs> penalized? Really? For what? Really? I mean, I'm gonna say this as a demanding, difficult, aggressive female. Not once have I been penalized for being demanding, except by myself, by making my life really hard for myself. But if you're viewed as being pushy or you're viewed unfavorably, I would ask in what context? Are you doing this at the front end and being viewed that way? Or are you coming along later on after you've been performing in the job for a little while and saying, give me a pay raise? Because that makes all the difference. Men pursue higher paying careers. Women are not deliberately setting out to find lower paying jobs. The jobs that women do are valued less than men's. And as women enter a field, the wages drop. When a large number of women became designers, wages fell by 34%. When they became biologists, wages dropped by 18%. Again, I would argue that there are variables that need to be explored in order to understand better why wages might drop in this capacity. If women's wages drop when women go into particular areas, one would think that, you know, employers would basically just hire women because they can pay them less. But that's not the case. And they only gave two examples out of how many job markets? Hmm. Uh, Prager, you said this better than me. Even within the same profession, men and women make different career choices that impact how much money they make. Take nursing, where male nurses, on the whole, earn 18% more than female nurses. The reason? Male nurses gravitate to the best-paying nursing specialties, they work longer hours, and disproportionately find jobs in cities with the highest compensation. Now here's how one expert on nursing compensation, Professor Linda Aiken of the University of Pennsylvania, sums up the data. Career choices and educational differences explain most, if not all, the gender gap in nursing. There are so many variables that drive wages that no single study can cover them all. Oh, wow. Oh, gee. Okay. It's just 20 cents, and that barely makes a difference. Really? For full-time workers in the U.S., a 20 cent difference comes out to about $10,000 a year on average. That amount can make the difference between poverty and financial security. It's clear that the gender pay gap does exist, and now you have six arguments to use to prove the naysayers wrong. This is your the final argument you want to make, is that, yep, this, you're, okay, sure, all right. 
So for starters, I have never heard this argument actually being articulated before ever. So I really don't outwardly have anything to say about this argument, but what I am gonna say is this. The fact that women are working less hours in a week, which is overall true across the board. In Australia, women work about a 36 hour week comparative to a man's 40 to 42 hour week. So when we're talking about this sort of thing, Again, it's never an apples to apples comparison, which means that making statements like, oh, they're earning less money overall, doesn't mean anything. Six arguments to use that prove that we don't really know how to put out new information. Yeah, just throw out misinformation at people. That's always useful. Never ever back yourself up or have any facts to back it up. Just cite one article or study and that's good enough for us. Maybe we just need to return to like bartering and, and the Stone Age where you just, clocked a girl on the head and you were like, pick the berries and, and you know, everyone had a role. Yeah, anyway. Mm. Anyway, so if you like the video, hit subscribe. If you have a comment to leave, feel free to do so. Just don't be rude about it because it hurts my feelings. And I will see you guys next time for more complaining. <laughs>